Welcome back YouTube to the ASX Portfolio channel. Today we're going to be talking about Monte Carlo simulation. So as you can see in the top right screen, this is what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be making a simulation of portfolio um, out to 100 days and we're going to track that over time. So we're going to be implementing in Python. Um, I hope you guys really enjoy. So what is Monte Carlo simulation and why would you want to do it? So the Monte Carlo method is most generally described as a computational simulation that relies on repeated random sampling to obtain numerical results. So that's a bit of a mouthful. Let's try and understand why we'd want to do this first. So in solving problems, we often rely on random variables uh, that have some kind of underlying distribution. Now, depending on the problem that we're trying to solve and the random variable and their distributions, there may or may not be a deterministic solution. So what I mean by this, in other words, if you were to place the same input into our deterministic algorithm, you would always get the same output. However, in practice, uh, as we start introducing more complex random variables to our models with different underlying distributions, this becomes a challenge working with the non-normal multivariate distributions and working out an exact mathematical solution. So instead, in practice, we rely on a method, Monte Carlo simulation, as we increase the number of simulations and therefore how many samples we're taking from these underlying distributions, we hope to try and converge on an exact solution. So hopefully you guys enjoy it. Let's jump into the code. So jumping into the code, uh, first thing we're gonna do is import our dependencies. So first thing, let's import pandas. So we're gonna to need to import numpy. We're going to need matplotlib to graph stuff dot pyplot as plt. Um, we're going to import date time as dt. And the other thing we're going to need to import is pandas data reader. Okay, so from pandas data reader, we're going to import data as pdr. Now, that is a module where we can get Yahoo specific data. Um, so just pip install that and we should be good to go. So let's import data. We're going to define a function called get data, and that's going to be stocks, start date, and end date. So what we need to return is a covariance matrix, and we need to return the mean returns uh, for whatever stocks we put in there for a certain date range. So first thing we're going to do is go stock data pdr um, dot get data and we're going to choose Yahoo. So that takes in stocks, um, a start date, and an end date. So um, the next thing we're gonna define is we, we get a data frame back and it has a whole bunch of information, bid ask, close prices. We're gonna only choose the column that says close prices for that information. We're only interested in the daily changes. So the returns of this matrix, we're gonna get the stock data and use the inbuilt pandas function percent change to get the daily changes. We're gonna use this returns function to compute the mean returns and the covariance matrix. So mean and, whoop, Returns.mean and we're going to go covariance matrix, which is returns.cove. So let's return the mean returns and the covariance matrix. Great, so let's define our stocks. So stock list. Um, we can just enter a whole bunch of ASX random uh, stock quotes that we know. Telstra, 
NAB um, Westpac Whoop. Westpac and let's go Santos so because I know the format of the Yahoo data list we're going to use list comprehension to add so stock for stock in stock list we're going to add um, the string .ax because Yahoo requires .ax at the end of all Australian stocks um, when we're pulling it in that data frame. So we also need to find a start date which is going to be, well let's define the end date first which is going to be dt.datetime now dot now and then the start date is going to be a shift from that end date so dt dot time delta and let's call that days 300 and that time range that we're specifying there is very important for um, how we're computing that covariance matrix because it's the covariance matrix um, that makes the world a difference uh, when we're taking into this Monte Carlo simulation. So the parameters derived there are very important. Uh, let's test this function. So mean returns covariance matrix equals get data, stocks, start date, end date. Cool, so let's print mean returns and let's see if that works. So Python activate base Python um, MC excellent and you can see that we've returned our mean mean returns there so now that we have our data uh, let's define weights for the portfolio. So weights for the portfolio, let's just define them randomly. Dot random. And the length is gonna be um, that mean returns column there. I think I'm just able to do that. Um, so random is gonna get a number between zero and one, I believe, uh, zero and one, so let's we need all of those to sum up equally to one. So mp.sum. So we just need to normalize by the sum of all those weights to get the weights matrix equal to one. So let's just print weights to see that we're doing the right thing there. So once we have that, now we'll be able to go into our Monte Carlo simulation methodology. That looks good to me. So note the size, it's a one by whatever our number of stocks is as an array. Let's jump into the Monte Carlo simulation, Monte Carlo method. So first thing we're gonna define is the number of simulations. So MC sims, let's call that 100 at the start. Um, we're also going to define the time range, which is going to be 100 days. Time frame in days. Um, we need to now, before we go into our big loop, um, where we're going to say for M in um, range 0 to MC sims, you know, we're going to, we're going to do, do stuff. We're going to do our Monte Carlo simulation. MC loops. We need to define some empty arrays that we're going to store information and retrieve information from. So one of these arrays is going to be mean returns um, in the format of the number of days. So uh, for that we're going to call this mean M, mean matrix, and we're going to use NP full. Now MP full takes a shape um, and it takes what we're gonna fill it with, so the fill value. So the fill value, as you probably guessed, is gonna be the mean returns. What we need to do is put this in the shape of um, our variables here, so the T. So it needs to take into consideration how many stocks we've got and um, the number of days. So 
Um, because of the way this, this fill value works, we've got to define it by number of days and then secondly, um, the length. Uh, let's use that weights vector to define how many um, variables, how many stocks are in the list. So it fills, it fills this based on the mean returns. Later on, you're gonna see that we're actually gonna to need to take the transpose of this matrix um, in order to do the computation below. So just take that for granted for now. The other array is the array that we're gonna store all this inf information in. So we're gonna call that the portfolio sims matrix. And that's just gonna be NP full shape with fill value and we're gonna go 0, 0.0 so that there's floats, floats can be added. If we went zero, then only integer values can be added to this simulation. And um, yeah, we, we need floats. So the shape value is going to be some factor of the number of sims and time. And in this example, we're using time first and MC sims for the dimensions. So just an empty array uh, with a number of sims and time frames. So as we run through this iteration, we need to use um, the formula for, to be able to work out daily returns. Now I'm just gonna chuck the formula up on the screen here. You can see daily returns is the mean plus by um, the lower uh, lower triangle from a Koleski decomposition and this represents the covariance matrix. So you can look up Koleski decomposition to find that lower triangle. Um, it's, just, it's just a way of representing it in this form. Um, we, we're gonna use it because uh, it's very simple for Monte Carlo analysis with stocks when we assume that we have a multivariate normal distribution um, we can use the Koleski decomposition to easily represent the daily returns by that formula. So we're taking a whole bunch of uncorrelated um, sample data that we sample from the normal distribution and we're, we're correlating them with the covariance matrix through the use of this lower triangle L. So let's, let's just jump into it. So we're gonna sample a whole bunch of uncorrelated um, variables mp.random.normal distribution and the size of this is going to be important and that's going to affect the number that we have there. Um, we're going to want this in um, t with the number of stocks so length weights. Excellent so that'll give us um, T times the number of stocks that we have uncorrelated um, random variables from the normal distribution. Now we're gonna work out what that lower triangle is, um, NP linear algebra module from NumPy and Koloski. And we're going to give it the covariance matrix. So very simple, it's just gonna work out um, what the yeah, lower triangle is for a Koleski decomposition. So as we have in the formula there, we're going to just say the mean, the daily returns, are the mean returns there, so mean M matrix um, for all those values of T, plus the inner product because we have a variable number of, of lengths here. So the inner product, so the dot product between all these different um, uh, stock, stocks in the portfolio. And we're gonna have the lower with Z. So let's make sure the dimensionality lines up here. This is um, the number of stocks by the number of stocks and this shape is T uh, with weights, with the number of stocks. So that should work out there. And the mean value is, um, it was T by the number of stocks, but it, we transformed it to be the number of stocks by T. And the reason we didn't just switch that beforehand was because the field value associates with this second quantity here. Okay, so let's take it that that, that works. What we need to do is now record those portfolio uh, daily returns and accumulate them across days. And then of course we wanna save down this information per simulation. So 
for all the days t for the specific simulation m we want to take the cumulative the um, cumulative prod so it returns the cumulative product of all the elements in this series so we're going to take the inner product again of the weights matrix and the daily returns and for the daily returns I think that's going to have to be the transpose yeah so uh, here we're just evaluating what the portfolio is for each day and we're taking the um, accumulated product of daily returns so that we don't have daily returns going out for the entire dime series but we have the cumulative effect of those daily changes um, what we're going to do is add a initial portfolio value initial portfolio let's say we started with ten thousand um, dollars we're going to add one because we have daily changes here so let's add one and start off at the initial portfolio value so let's plot portfolio sims let's just check that runs first and we'll add some things to this graph a y label which we call portfolio value So we didn't get any error messages, which is good, but our plot didn't show up because I didn't say plt.show. So we've got days on the x-axis and the title is going to be MC simulation of a portfolio, a stock portfolio, plt.show. So now if we run that, we should get our nice image of our returns from initial portfolio $10,000. So as you can see, we've now uh, got our image here of um, from $10,000, all our simulated variables of correlated, um, correlated assets between them uh, as defined by our, our covariance matrix. So again, the, the covariance matrix and the time period that we, def we parameterize that over is extremely important. Um, so, you know, you can play around now with the, the number of simulations that you take here, uh, the time frame, and uh, of course the components of, of stocks that you have and, and the time range. So please enjoy using this, uh, using this Monte Carlo simulation and I hope you get a lot of value out of it. Thank you very much for listening to ASX Portfolio and see you guys in the next one. Don't forget to like and subscribe uh, if you want to see more content like this. Cheers.